I think the science being done on this expedition is really important. It's answering this really fundamental question about the Agullis current. Well, we've only had three major expeditions to the Indian Ocean since modern oceanography began. In this particular location, this isn't common to be working in four or five knots of current. Five knots. Yeah, <laughs> it's kick-ass current. Instruments we use, the technology that we embrace while we gather this data fascinates me. Ultimately what we're interested in is how the ocean responds to and feeds back on and forces climate. When we look at a world map, we see the names of these oceans, the North Atlantic, the South Atlantic. But as far as nature is concerned, there's really only one world ocean. It's linked by currents, dozens of currents, some warm, some cold, course through the body of the ocean like blood vessels in the human body. We are currently in the Agolis Current off the east coast of South Africa. What we're trying to measure is how the Agolis current changes over time. How its strength or intensity, or what we like to call transport, changes over time, and how it may be changing in response to climate change, or it may feed back on climate change. We look out across the ocean from the bridge of a ship, and we see water. And it looks like this undifferentiated mass of salt water. But it's not. So the scientist has to come up with surrogate eyes, some means of measuring that which he or she cannot see. I know the time when this next set comes up. So they've designed brilliant machines and technology to measure that which they can't see. Yeah, I got it. Thanks. There are two instruments fundamental to the measurement of a, the ocean, the CTD and the mooring. So we lower this entire package down to the bottom of the ocean to measure temperature, salinity, oxygen, and velocity. This cast is about 4,000 meters, so it should take about three hours down and back up. And that's the data we use from the surface to the bottom. Looking at those very simple properties, we can tell where these water masses came from. This is one of the really cool things about the ocean. Water masses are formed in particular parts of the world. For example, one of the water masses we see here in the Agulhas Current comes from the Red Sea. The Agulhas Current is a western boundary current like the Gulf Stream. And these currents play a very important role in climate by transporting heat away from the tropics and towards the poles. The Agulhas Current flows along the east coast of South Africa and then retroflects south of the African continent to feed back into the Indian Ocean subtropical gyre. And then at the retroflexion, it forms these Agulhas rings, which uh, feed into the South Atlantic, taking Indian Ocean kind of blobs, if you like, of warm Indian Ocean waters with them into the South Atlantic, and we call this Agulhas leakage. And water in the Indian Ocean has a lot different properties. From the Atlantic, it's warmer and it's saltier. So this warm and salty water moving into the Atlantic can basically change something very fundamental about the Atlantic. The Atlantic is special because the Gulf Stream system is transporting enormous quantities of heat northward into the Nordic seas. There this warm water loses its heat and it sinks and literally flows back south along the bottom, back under the Gulf Stream the fancy term for this is the meridional overturning circulation. This northerly and southerly exchange of cold and warm water is one of the prime determinants of climate. Without that, the Earth would be a very, very different place. Broad swaths of it would be uninhabitable, be either too hot or frozen solid. So if we know something about the volume transport and the strength of the Agulhas current, um, then we can know something about the changing in Agulhas leakage 
And this is ultimately, in the big picture, what we're really interested in in terms of climate because it's the agolus leakage which takes the warm and salty waters from the Indian Ocean into the Atlantic and affects that overturning circulation. So it's the leakage that really um, has uh, the effect on climate. The most important component of the measurements that we're taking is what we call the mooring array. So a mooring is a taut vertical wire with an anchor at the bottom and a large float at the top. And we put current meters along the wire about every 500 meters that use acoustics to measure velocity from the ocean surface to the seabed. So these moorings, there are seven of them and we've spread them across the current and they stay in the water for a whole three years and we collect these measurements every 20 minutes over the whole three years of the experiment. So we can reconcile the natural variability in the ocean and find the mean flow or the mean strength of the current. Well, basically, we're looking for a mooring that didn't pop up when we acoustically released it, so we think it snagged on something on the bottom. Right now, we are on station where our first pressure sensor small mooring is located, and now we are waiting to send a wake-up command to this release. If it's not released, it'll give us this series of pulses with two seconds in between. Once it releases, it should come to the surface within a minute or two. Coming up pretty fast, let me get another one to confirm. Hold on. Whenever I send the command to it, it tells me a status reply, and the status reply says, I'm released. But when I range on it, the range doesn't change, which means something is either blocking it from coming, coming up, or it's some biofouling, something. All we're going to do here is give it a good stiff bump and hope that it kind of wiggles free of whatever's holding it up on the bottom. All right, Cap, you all set? We want 30 a minute. Yeah, go ahead up at 30. All right, Cap, I'm going all of them. Maintaining the same heading, just moving the ship's ground position around the point to kind of do a circle, a loop around it. He started here. He's going to slingshot right around it. It's good, Scotty. Okay. Start going down, please, at, at 20 meters a minute. Out at 20. You want to bring it around and I'll whack it and see if it goes down. I can probably move it to uh, stop it a little bit. See here, see the lead now? We're, we're sucking up all of this extra crap that we left out over here. Way too much. I know it's, it's 11 o'clock at night. There's only one other thing I can think to do, and it's gonna be wacky. That's good. That's good. We definitely have, we definitely hit it. Uh, do you see the flashing light? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got Wait, it. Okay. You see it? Yeah, it's right there. It's blinking. Let's check and see if there's data on it. <laughs> That's kind of a miracle. Pretty much given up on this one, so. Awesome. Hey, good job. Yeah. Uh, it's all of us, man. That was a team that developed. That was a team. At Sea Research is a unique combination of heavy industry, expert seamanship, and fine tolerant science. Those things all have to happen together in cooperation, or the expedition won't be successful. We all come together from different backgrounds, and then we try to achieve one common goal. Life at sea is really intense because it's close quarters, often with people that you don't know. But by the end of three weeks, you become this big family. It's almost like you're living in a bubble all together and you get to know everyone really, really well. 
most interesting parts for me, it's been actually deploying the instruments themselves. So there's always stuff happening on the boat. It's 24 seven. From the time I was five years old, taking apart the television set when I shouldn't have, I've been in love with electronics. That's where my soul is. Take pride in that whatever was designed and put in the water, and we came back uh, 18 months later, and it comes back like it was supposed to. That's a good feeling. To be part of some of these projects is, is definitely a pretty incredible thing. I can't tell you how many times over the years I've picked up a Smithsonian magazine. I'll look at it and say, I remember that group. I remember that PI. I remember doing that stuff. We really want to accomplish science. There is definitely a pride that goes along with completing the project goals. Aside of it being fun, you can actually have an impact on society. You can give back something. The ocean is 70% of our planet, and it's, we know remarkably little about it. We don't know the seasonality of the Agolas current. We don't even know how it varies from summer to winter. We're hoping to better understand uh, current, which we think is an essential limb of this massive ocean conveyor belt, which transports heat and salt. In the talk about climate, the ocean often gets left out, but that makes no sense. We can't leave out the ocean any more than we can leave out the air. The most important impact of what we're doing is ultimately trying to understand the climate system uh, better and trying to predict how the climate system is going to change in the future given the anthropogenic forcings of carbon dioxide. Now, with the awareness that the climate is changing and the knowledge that the ocean and the climate have a braided relationship, there's this urgency. And the urgency comes from climate change. On the most fundamental level, I think that it's so important to understand our own planet, our own home. This is where we live. This is what sustains us. 